object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that goes all the way back to the 1960s. It first appeared in a form that we might recognize today in a language called Simula 67. It was such a potent idea that it was quickly adopted by other languages, most notably Smalltalk, Object Pascal, and C++. Most modern programming languages, including JavaScript, have origins in these languages. What object-oriented programming is depends on who you ask, though there are some features that appear in almost every definition of object-oriented programming. They are dynamic dispatch, polymorphism, encapsulation, and inheritance. We'll be learning more about these things as we go along. Dynamic dispatch determines which code is to be executed at any given time. Polymorphism allows like objects to be treated similarly. Encapsulation allows like data and functionality to be bundled together. And inheritance allows objects to be specialized or generalized. Before we dive into each of these terms in detail, let's consider a layperson's definition of object-oriented programming. Once we have that, it'll be easier to discuss these features. Object-oriented programming is a way of logically organizing your code in a way that makes sense with respect to the problem we're trying to solve. As the name implies, at the heart of object-oriented programming is the concept of an object. The easiest way to start thinking about objects is to make real-world analogies. A car is an object, a shape is an object, a person, considered abstractly, is an object. Once you start thinking about real-world things as objects, you can start thinking about their parts and relationships. A car is a type of vehicle. It has a certain number of wheels, and it has functionality. It moves, lights up, etc. A triangle is a shape, and shapes have a certain number of sides, possibly infinite, such as a circle. Object-oriented programming allows you to express, in code, these relationships and properties. Let's take a look at what classes and objects mean. Classes are abstract representations of things. A vehicle, but not a specific vehicle. A car, but not a specific car. You can think of classes as templates. Objects, or object instances, are concrete things. A specific vehicle, such as my car, or Jim's car, or car 37. In most object-oriented languages, including JavaScript, it is conventional to start class names with capital letters and start object names with lowercase letters. On the left, we see a class hierarchy. Class vehicle is our most generic class, and gas vehicle and electric vehicle are subclasses of vehicles. Similarly, car is a subclass of gas vehicle. You can say that a car is a gas vehicle, and it also is a vehicle. But a vehicle isn't necessarily a car. Note that most of our objects are instances of classes at the bottom of the inheritance tree, cars, motorcycles, and electric cars. However, you can usually have instances of any class. For example, we have generic vehicle 15, which is an instance of the vehicle class. What's important to understand about objects is that they inherit the functionality of not just their class, but that of their superclass and all ancestors. For example, if all vehicles have a property called odometer, then an instance of type car has an odometer because vehicle is one of its ancestors. A gas vehicle could have a property called fuel level, so car and motorcycle would also have fuel level, but an electric car would not because it is not an ancestor of either car or motorcycle. As you can see, object-oriented programming is very intuitive. We are logically modeling real-world behavior in a way that makes sense to us. This is one of the reasons that object-oriented programming has been so popular.